Hey everyone. Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is a sample video of our latest podcast episode in which we interview the New York Times best-selling author Jeffrey Mason about his new book Lost Companions. This book explores the topic of grieving for our companion animals. And it's an emotional and powerful topic because of course so many of us can relate to this. Most people have at some point lived with a companion animal. It's a very moving read indeed and a great book idea for not yet vegans who have or who have had companion animals in their lives to help them make the connection between those animals whom they love and the other animals whom they're eating, wearing and using. Yeah, Jeffrey is an incredible storyteller. He shares some wonderful stories with us about relationships between humans and animals, not just domesticated animals, but also wild animals, including a wombat and a bear. Some very Amazing. fascinating stories. Yeah. We also share our personal stories of our relationships with companion animals that we've lived with previously, mm -hmm. as well as the relationship with a wild animal. Yes. So we hope you enjoyed this short sample. And if you want to listen to the full podcast episode, you can join us on Patreon, which is linked in the description below this video. Happy watching, and we'll speak to you soon in the next episode. See you then. Bye. Bye. Yeah. And that's why, you know, talking about your earlier question about, about when they die, mm. I think one lesson I learned from the book that I didn't know, and I'm not sure why the person wanted to be anonymous, but there's a vet, a veterinarian, in, and I quote him in the book, and he said, uh, I want everybody to listen to this. It's very important. He said, I have seen numerous times when somebody brings a dog or a cat into me to be reached the end and it's time for euthanasia and they can't bear to be there for the last minute and they leave. And he said, the dog invariably picks up his or her head and looks around and is deeply upset they do not want to be alone, dogs especially, in their last moment. They want you to be with them. And I think that's, that's, it's very important to realize that, that we, even if it's hard on us, we have to be there for their last moment. So in that sense, I would say possibly they do understand death. They do know that this is the end for them. That was actually our very next question. You were writing about the importance of being there for, for our companion animals at the very end. And I guess one of the questions we had is why wouldn't people want to be there at the end with, with the animals? Well, I guess the reason would be that it's, it's so upsetting to, to, to actually watch, you know, someone give a, a, a final um, drug or whatever, an injection or whatever, and, and know that they will be gone yeah. at that moment. I mean, that, that's very difficult, very, very difficult. But the vet was saying, I don't care how difficult it is for you, you have to be there because it, it's, it's not a proper death for the dog if you're not there. Yeah. It reminds me very much of a quote by Leo Tolstoy that the Animal Save Movement has used for a long time, Jeff. I can't remember the exact quote, but it's words to the effect of, you know, when you're wanting to turn away from someone in need uh don't come closer bear witness essentially uh That's and, good. and yeah. I, it, you know it's much more uh, eloquently worded than that but i think i still conveyed the sentiment nevertheless and i think it relates to what we're talking about here i mean if we think about it we're basically talking about the selflessness of companion animals yeah. particularly dogs here and whilst i don't want to label leaving the room at that final moment a selfish act on our part in part we are trying to protect ourselves but what yes. is needed is we need to really come closer because and then acknowledge that they need us more in that moment than we need to leave and they've been there for us uh, invariably and faithfully and loyally and unwaveringly since they've been with us so it's kind of the least we can do if we if you like i totally agree totally agree once someone has lost a companion animal, how do you recommend they deal with that loss? Is there a way that they can grieve their animal companions the same way as they grieve a human companion being lost? Or is that grief different for an animal? Well, the, the main point I wanted to get across in the book is that nobody should tell you, nobody has the right to tell you that's enough of grieving. Yeah. That every person will grieve as long as they need to and it, it's best not to interfere 
with that from the outside. Now, I think today we probably know that lesson. I would say not that long ago, maybe 25 years ago, it would be very common to have people say, oh, it's only a dog, it's only a cat, it's only a bird, get over it. And um, I don't think, I hope that nobody would say that today and I implore anyone listening never to say that to a child or even an adult when, when they've lost a companion animal because they need to grieve as long as they want. I had so-called friends on Facebook, 3,500 of them, and I, I put out a notice, what do you do when your companion animal dies? And I was flooded with responses, and they were right and I was wrong. They, they said, you have to do something ritualistic, a ceremony. And I got all kinds of answers. I'm surprised at how many women put a tattoo on their body of the animal. Mm. Um, others, the most common, I think, was to bury the ashes somewhere in the forest. Yeah, when I was reading Chapter 12, Healing Rituals That Memorialize Lost Animals, I immediately thought of our next door neighbors who recently told me that they had a cat companion who'd been living with them for 10 years who they loved deeply and had not that long ago passed away. And they buried her.